Justice League. It's a film that I've been waiting for for a very long time. I have a lot of opinions about this film. I watched the movie twice. Why well, wouldn't just sit down and talk to you guys about the film and kind of say some of the stuff I liked about the film and some stuff I didn't like about the film. Overall, I enjoy the film. I think that the movie has a lot of problems. I think the movie has a lot of issues, some stuff that could have been easily fixed, some stuff that was by the time they actually went to production it was too late to fix. A lot of stuff that kind of went from Batman vs Superman to this film and kind of eventually didn't work. This film is flawed to say the least. But in the end of the day, there is something about this film that I can't really explain why I enjoyed so much, but there's something almost magical about it. I think that as a DC fan, going and watching this film, there was something very magical about seeing the characters interact. Sure, it does not excuse a lot of the other problems of this film. What I was expecting was to watch a cool film about characters I really like, kind of interacting, having some fun, and eventually I had some fun because I, I think that that's something that, you know, in recent years, some fans, especially very hardcore DC fanatics, have turned the word fun to something bad, as if a movie that is fun is not a good film. And I, I, I really don't understand how you can turn the word fun into something bad, because in what sad existence do you live in where having fun in the theater means that the movie is not good or it's not deep enough or not enough or not clever enough and it's like if you consider a, a film that is fun a bad film that there's something wrong with you so stop making the word fun as a bad thing this review will contain spoilers i kind of want to talk about overall the film and then gonna, i'm going to talk about the characters does the film have issues for sure like the movie has way too many issues but at the same time the uphill battle this film had you know from the production you know from the unfortunate and the very sad tragic event that happened to Zack Snyder and his family I mean as a father myself I really can't imagine how you even you know wh what do you do in that type of situation because it, it just you know I don't wanna, even want to talk about it because it's, it's so terrifying for me to even think about something like that so I can't even imagine what his family and has been going through so I'm not gonna even talk about it out of respect of Zack Snyder and his family I feel your pain and I hope you guys you know be able to get through this because you know there's no even words to say you know about this he never got the chance to finish the film so out of respect for him and what happened I'm gonna keep you know Snyder not uh, to blame for what happened in this film but it's that I can't really blame Joss Whedon because he was brought in into a film that was already in post-production and then he had to go back into filming and kind of try to fix certain things that already happened so, and it wasn't really his script, it wasn't really his film, you know, it happened due to some unfortunate events but it's still a mess, you know, and obviously Warner Brothers suddenly then decided they want to do a, a two-hour film. kind of felt like throughout this entire film that it's almost like Warner Brothers try to push everything for Batman vs Superman away. You can't kind of see it from the very first scene of the film and we will talk about the Superman jaw a bit later but you know it kind of felt like this movie was this constant retcon to, to Batman vs Superman. Like there are certain events that happen in Batman vs Superman almost kind of never like happened. Like they kind of try to say well yeah we know that Superman was different in Batman vs Superman but not in this film. Like, like they kind of kind of try to act as if Superman was always the type of Superman we saw in this film because in Batman vs Superman he was very different. They pretty much did a soft reboot with this film and without any time travel and I'm okay with that actually. The other big major thing about this film is that it's it felt like it was rushing through every little scene. Not even edited, chopped down in the most you know, brutal way because like every action scene in this film except one that when superman comes back every action scene felt like very short like there was nothing really major happened in those scenes i feel like everything kind of felt very like all right let's get through the next shot next shot next shot especially the first hour of the film everything kind of felt like it was moving really, really really fast like they were trying to get through as many scenes as possible to establish the film but just to get to the point where the team comes together and look two hours is still a long time right there's nothing wrong with having a two-hour film two hours is still long and most people could, will consider a two-hour film as a long film i personally think that this movie could have used another 15 to 20 minutes but i think it, the the problem is not the runtime the problem is that Warner Brothers keeps making the, the same mistake with batman superman with suicide squad and just league 
they keep shooting these three hour, four hour films and then they try to figure out how to cut it down. I understand how they didn't learn from their mistakes from Suicide Squad, Batman and Superman, like they did the very same mistakes again. You have to understand that you cannot keep making films that are super long and then try to condense them to a two hour film. It's just not gonna work. It's always gonna feel strange and you feel that in throughout the entire film because they should have figured it out while they were writing the script while they were filming. I think that if this movie had another 15 to 20 minutes, it would have solved a lot of issues. I feel like one of the biggest mistakes that done in this film is not to have an Aquaman film before this film. Because I feel like at first it seemed like they were trying to make him a major player in the film, but it, in the end it kind of felt like Aquaman was kind of there, but you didn't really understand that much about him, especially if you're not a comic book fan. And I feel like, you know, the way they did Flash and Cyborg actually did work, because I like the idea of Cyborg being connected into the plot, and I think that his uh, role that he was playing in the film came in a very natural way to the plot, and I feel like I did really need a Cyborg film. I don't think anybody really would need a Cyborg film. I think that they will ever do a cyber film and the same thing with the flash even though i do want to see a flash film don't get me wrong but i think that the way they made flash in this film made it make sense that he didn't need his own film before this film this is a flash that just became the flash right being the flash is very new to him and having him face someone big before this film would have actually took away from that because you know we have that scene when he runs at Superman, right? And Superman kind of slowly starts throwing his head at the Flash and it's like, look at this, like, first the eye, and then like he looks at him and the look at Ezra Miller's face was like, oh shit, he sees me. I am not the fastest man alive. And that scene was great. And if they would have already had Flash go against, you know, someone really major in his own film, that would have been the whole stuff with Flash wouldn't be the same. So I'm okay with them doing a Flash film after Justice League because that actually makes sense to me. But with Aquaman, I felt like there was a need for an Aquaman film because there were certain things in this film that felt to me like they were trying almost to act as if we already had an Aquaman film, but we actually didn't. So I feel like Aquaman should have gotten his own film. I think it actually would have worked better. Suicide Squad should have not been a film before just like I think they should have waited with Suicide Squad. I don't understand what was the urgency to make a Suicide Squad film. I just can't comprehend why. But I really do think that Aquaman should have been a film that happened before Justice League. They should have established his character. They should have had a film about him becoming a king. He needs to become the king to prevent a war. And that would have been a really cool thing because then when we go to Justice League, it would have been Aquaman being kind of conflicted. Is he gonna protect Atlantis? Is he gonna protect the world? And is his journey to become a superhero? Because his movie would have been about him becoming a king and Just League would have been about him becoming the superhero. And I think that would have worked much, much better. Now let's get to the characters. That's the thing that I really, really loved about this film is that the characters are the best thing about this film. These are type of characters you want to cheer for. This type of characters you want them to succeed. I love the dynamic of the team. I love how the characters made me feel like these are superheroes. This is the type of guys I want to root for. Here we have a team of heroes where all of them are acting like heroes and that's a big thing. I really enjoyed the team. I enjoyed the dynamic of the team. I think that the best thing about this film was the team and how they interacted with each other and how they were presented and that was cool. I loved the dynamic between Batman and Wonder Woman. I feel like yeah this is this is what I want to see you know Batman and Wonder Woman kind of being like will they or won't they type of thing you know I really like their connection. I love that scene when Batman tells her you know, where were you? Why don't you do more superhero stuff? Stop, you know, crying about your dead boyfriend. She like pushes him, you know, kind of punches him and says, you know, who are you to tell me what to do? And I loved how the Flash says, you do realize that if she kills you, we will cover her. Like, I will talk about the Flash in a second, but that that line kind of killed me. Ben Affleck is Batman. He's so good. And it's so unfortunate that this might be the last time we see him. And if it is the last time we see him, then at least we got to see him in this film because I really, really enjoy it. I, I like how he uses gadgets. Like, they didn't try to overpower him. They didn't try to make him like, yeah, he can totally take down parademons without an issue. Like, he needed his gadgets. He needed his technology. 
to take down Parademons. I like it. They didn't try no to make him brooding, angry. I really enjoyed it. Uh, how the Batman is filmed. This is definitely one of the best live action Batman we ever got. Wonder Woman, there's nothing to say except the fact that she is great. They really got Wonder Woman really right. Just keep doing what you're doing with Wonder Woman. You're really doing a really great job with her. Let Patty Jenkins do her thing because so far Wonder Woman is perfect. I think that there's no one watching this film yet complain about uh, Wonder Woman. And I think that Gal Gadot really came into her home is Wonder Woman. I really think that she is the definitive Wonder Woman right now. Uh, Aquaman, I kind of already talked about Aquaman mostly. I really did enjoy what they were doing with him. I like how badass he is. I just hope that they would have made his own film before this film. But I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with Aquaman because just the little teases we had for Aquaman and Atlantis and all that, that worked real well. And hopefully they will let James Wan do his thing. Because you let you have to let your directors, you know, really figure out the characters. And I just hope that the, that Aquaman would have had more to do in this film. And, but you know, overall, I really enjoy Aquaman. That scene where he sits on the lasso of truth and starts, you know, saying the truth, you know, without realizing he's saying the truth. That was a pretty awesome scene. And so casting Jason Momoa as Aquaman is definitely was one of the best ideas. Because I know some people saying, well, he should have short hair and he shouldn't have tattoos and you know he shouldn't act like Lobo. Face it. The reason why people are really excited about Aquaman right now is because of Jason Momoa. So just just roll with it. Flash was awesome for the most part. I still don't really like the suit. I, I, I know something about the suit looks strange to me. Hopefully that in the next film they would kind of change his suit. Ezra Miller was really good. I think that most of his jokes worked. Some of them didn't, but I think for the most part, you know, he was, you know, this, you know, really a fun character. I, I like how he's like, you know, almost like a little kid when he goes to the Batcave and like, Oh, look at this, the Batcave, you know, he goes to the, to the Batmobile and all that. That was fun. I think that, you know, Ezra Miller really, really did a really good job as the Flash. I really did enjoy how they did the Flash in this film. I also liked how, you know, the Speed Force worked and all that. And that scene where he fights Superman was freaking awesome. And, you know, this movie really gets me excited for the Flash film whenever they're going to do it. And hopefully they're going to do it some point next five years. Because at this point they're like, well, yeah, we're going to do Flashpoint. But, um... Uh, it's gonna happen. Cyborg was actually my biggest surprise in this film because at first I didn't think I would like Cyborg, but actually I think Cyborg was one of my favorite characters in this film. I think they really fleshed his character out really well. They made him essential to the team, they made him essential to the story, and I think Ray Fisher did a really good job. I think I liked how they did Cyborg. I just CGI on him didn't really worked always because sometimes it looked like really really bad but i think that they should have kind of mixed practical effects with cgi because when it's all cgi it kind of looks strange but i did like what i did with cyborg let's talk about superman so there are three things i want to talk about superman the first thing is how they made superman be superman superman in this film is awesome he's the type of superman i always wanted to see i know some snyder fans are not really happy that they kind of almost threw away everything that snyder was doing with superman and trying not to do a different version of superman being this unsure if he should save the world type of superman or not i really liked how they did superman in this film i felt like this is the type of superman i always felt like it works superman should not be conflicted about being a hero you cannot be a good person and and be like i'm not sure if i should be a good person or not no if you're a good person you just get a good person and being a symbol of hope means something and you have to kind of embrace that and maybe it takes away some of the depth of the character but i feel like the superman we had in batman the superman didn't really have that much depth anyway because he, you know instead of making him this fun and smiling boring character they kind of made him this sad and brooding boring character so just making him boring from one place to boring from another place didn't really make him any more interesting so at least now we have a happy superman superman that brings joy and i think that you can make a lot more stuff with with a happy superman than with a sad superman and i really liked how you know he was super powerful like stepping move like punching him swimming like oh come on man you can't touch this you know and i liked how you know superman was making jokes he was smiling he was smiling oh my god that joe we will talk about the cgi joe in a second i mean because that was wow i mean talk about you know effing up cgi that was terrible before we talk about it quickly let's talk about how he comes back obviously everything they did in batman and superman doesn't matter anymore all that 
dirt rising up from the grave, you know, in the end of Batman Superman. Yeah, forget about that. I think that the initial idea was different for how he comes back. I think that they kind of just decide, hey, look, we need Superman in this film as soon as possible. So let's find the best, not the best, but the fastest way they can we can bring Superman back to life. And if I'm honest, I was okay with that. Now, there's a big difference then. It was great to... I was kind of fine with that, but I think that at least we got Superman in this film as soon as possible. I just hope that they just just said, "Hey, no, you know what? He didn't actually die. He, you know, he just comes back from right at the start." Because I never liked the idea of killing Superman. I always thought that that was one of the worst ideas in Batman vs Superman. When you look in this film, it just shows how pointless his death was. But at least they brought him back. I mean, mother boxes and whatever, you know, and some of the stuff that they can't try to set up in Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman never actually came to play in this film. And I like that scene when he comes back and he's kind of confused and you know he fights the league. That scene when he fights the league was my favorite action scene of this entire film. You know, when he fights Wonder Woman, that was awesome. When he fights the Flash, freaking amazing, right? I want to see more stuff like that and you know when he then goes after batman you know even that stupid line of do you bleed and his entire jaw like do you bleed like it was a scary face not because superman looks scary because of that terrible cgi but i really liked it. and then when he comes back later on yeah i believe in truth but also justice boom i like that i liked how they finally did Superman right. For better or worse, they did Superman right. Then we have the CGI jaw. I think Warner Bros. is the one to blame here because they should have made a contract to ensure that if they need to do reshoots, which every movie needs to do reshoots nowadays, that they would have Henry Cavill with no mustache. But they didn't have that. I, I can't understand how Warner Bros. not only couldn't see it coming, but they couldn't figure out a way to deal with Super with, with uh, Paramount so Henry Cavill could shave his beard. But even the mustache, I just can't figure out how this is how they did it. The very first scene of the film, it's freaky, right? It's freaky to the point that there is no way, right? Anyone who tells me that, yeah, I didn't really notice it. Yes, you did. Stop lying. He looks like Jack Nicholson's Joker type, like, like something like this. This is the best thing you can come up with. I know that there were reshoots and they didn't really have that much time to work in the CGI, but it's like you had to do something better here, right? Because there had to be a better way to deal with this. Speaking of bad CGI, let's talk about Steppenwolf. I will start with this because this is kind of funny. Zod had gray CGI armor and he was shooting orange fires from his eyes. Zod had a device that shoots a blue beam into the sky. Zod's plan was to turn Earth into Krypton. In Batman vs Superman, we had a gray CGI monster that shoots orange fire from his eyes, has orange lightning, there's an orange beam going to the sky, and I guess Doomsday would have probably wanted to destroy the world. Enchantress, her brother was mostly CGI and gray and orange, she had a device that shoots a blue beam into the sky, and her plan was to turn the world into some of her own image. Wonder Woman, we had a dude in a CGI armor that was shooting actual beams, well, lightning, and his plan was to turn the world into something of his own image. Steppenwolf had an original idea, didn't he? He had gray armor, he had a weapon with orange fire, he had a, the blue beam, and his only initial plan was to use a certain device that will turn the world into his own image. Five movies, same type of villains, all of them the same, and Steppenwolf was the worst. Like, you know that you really effed up when your villain looks like something I killed in God of War. The only th cool thing about him when he was first showed up on Temascara and he was fighting Amazons, that was cool, but beyond that, I'm just happy that I decided not to use Darkseid in this film. I think that they're actually going to move forward and not do Darkseid for a while. And I think that they kind of don't want to have any connection between Steppenwolf and Darkseid. Because Steppenwolf was so bad that I think that Darkseid is like, Yeah, I don't know you, boy. We, Me and you are not connected. If I'm honest, this film didn't really need a really great villain. Because... This film really focused on the characters, and I think that as far as characters go, they really nailed those characters. So it kind of like the villain was like more of an afterthought. But I just feel like 
it would have been so much better if they would have used something like Brainiac because then it would have been much better because they kind of wasted all the apocalypse stuff and there was a lot of cool stuff they could have done but I think that they should have waited with Steppenwolf and had him like a general of, of Darkseid whenever Darkseid shows up. So hopefully they will figure out a way to learn from their mistakes, stop making films that are four hours long and try to, 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 to figure out what type of movies they want to do before actually doing them and hopefully have some smart producers in place stop having as this film had more producers than actual league members so hopefully one of us is gonna find a way to make this cinematic universe better and you know hopefully aquaman would be amazing but overall i liked it not that i didn't love it it's not a good film but it's an enjoyable film Hopefully you sat down and heard all my rumblings and you know, hopefully the light, the, the ever-changing lightning of this video didn't make you feel like I'm completely unprofessional when it comes to camera work. Till next time, this is Alex saying 